Welcome back, everybody. Hope everyone is doing well. My name is Jason. I'll be your host on this CFL talk show, Hussies Huddle. In this video, I give my predictions and a preview for week two of the 2022 CFL season. But really quickly, before we get started, I just want to mention a few things. One is that we are now eligible on the channel for a community tab. So right on the top of the, the channel, when you visit my channel, there should be a thing that says community. And those that are subscribed, it should show up in your uh, subscription box. And basically, it will allow me to do stuff like little posts and stuff, stuff that's not worthy of really making a like a quick little video about. Uh, I can post there. I can do polls and stuff like that. So for game predictions going forward, I can start doing some polls over there as well. So uh, breaking news content, really excited to add that uh, community tab to the channel. And I hope you guys can check that out. And be sure to hit like and subscribe before we get started with today's video. I really appreciate it, everybody. And with that said, let's talk about this week's game picks. So I think we have a very interesting slate of games this week. I think three of the four games look very uh, close and, you know, coin flips on paper. And then the other one you never know about. So starting with the first game, which is Thursday night between the Montreal Alouettes visiting the Toronto Argonauts. Toronto is a three-point favorite the last time I checked on the TSN app. And it's going to be a very interesting game. I think the one thing that stands out to me uh, matchup-wise is that William Stanback is no longer on the Alouettes right now because of a, a serious injury he suffered in Week 1. And I think when I looked at this matchup prior to the season, he was a big reason why I actually thought Montreal had the advantage in this matchup because Toronto doesn't necessarily have the best run defense. It kind of got uh, uh, shredded at times last season. Ultimately, I think that Montreal has that you know elite running presence when Stanback's in there to take advantage of it. But now that they don't have that, can they still exploit Toronto's relatively weak run defense? That's the thing. Because Toronto is more built to beat teams like Hamilton that don't really have a good running game and just are more pass heavy. So it's going to be very interesting to see if a guy like Jeshwin Antwi has a big game there, that Canadian running back that's likely going to be starting for the Alouettes in this one. So keep an eye out for that. And then on the Toronto side, you have a bunch of players making their debuts for the Argos. Obviously, this is the Argos' first game of the season after having the week one bye. You have guys like Andrew Harris, Brandon Banks, Jagarit Davis all making their debuts for the Argos. And it's going to be interesting to see what guys hit out of those additions and what guys ultimately flop because there are going to be some of each. I definitely believe that some of these guys are not going to work out. They're older players and maybe their body just won't respond. But I think a couple of these guys are really going to pan out for the Argos and it's going to be very interesting to see how they get off to a good start or if they get off to a good start in week two. So you know, with that in mind and the standback injury in mind, I am going to take Toronto to win this game by a score of 30 to 23. I think that Montreal, they're a team that's very hard to blow out because they're a team that can score points very explosively. They have a very explosive passing game. But I think that that running game is just so important to them. And I don't think they're going to have that dominant running game that they had the last couple of times they played Toronto last year when they had William Standback. So I think ultimately that is going to be the difference in this game. Vernon Adams, I expect him to have some spectacular plays, but is he also going to press too much, make a few mistakes, interceptions here or there, keeping in my eye out for that. And ultimately, I think the Argos are going to win this game. I just think they're going to be pumped up. This is their season opener. They're playing at home. They played pretty well at home last year. And with that stand back injury, like I said, that's going to be the difference. And then over on Twitter, 64% of respondents are taking the Argos to win. So it'll be interesting to see if we are both right come week two. And then the second game of the week is the Winnipeg Blue Bombers visiting the Ottawa Red Blacks. Winnipeg opens as a two and a half point favorite here. And this is a back-to-back -back matchup, a rematch from week one where the Ottawa Red Blacks just narrowly lost to the two-time defending Grey Cup champions. And I think there's a couple of things in play here and why I went back and forth with who I was going to pick for this game. On the one hand, you have the Ottawa Red Blacks who obviously played their hearts out in week one and ultimately lost. And I just don't know, can they play that well again? You know, it kind of felt like that was their opportunity to beat this Winnipeg team because Winnipeg just had such an off day. They couldn't run the ball at all. And, you know, all the credit to Ottawa, but they ultimately found a way to lose that game despite playing so well. Uh, but then the other factor is that it's very hard to beat a team on back-to-back -back weeks. So, you know, I think Winnipeg may have trouble beating Ottawa in Ottawa this week. So, 
it's going to be very, very interesting to see what is going to happen in this game. I'm looking at the Winnipeg secondary that really struggled last week. A guy like Winston Rose on the corner got burned like toast last week by like guys like Jalen Acklin. So I'm really taking a look at that. And if Ottawa could continue to attack this Winnipeg defense down the field, like not a lot of teams were able to do in 2021 or 2019. So I'm very interested to see what happens there. But ultimately, I'm going with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers to win this game here by a score of 21 to 20. I just think it's just so close, and I just don't see Winnipeg really playing that poorly again, despite the fact that Ottawa looked very impressive last week. I just don't know if Ottawa can really play that well again. They just feel like they missed their opportunity. But again, it could go either way, given the fact that it's very hard to beat a professional football team two times in a row. And then over on Twitter, the fans are taking the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 62% of the time. So we're both rolling with the Bombers this week. Now moving over to Saturday's game, starting with the Calgary Stampeders visiting the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The Tiger Cats opening here as a two and a half point favorite. I believe I heard some discussion that it's now a one point spread. So either way, going to be a very close game, or at least it seemed like it's going to be a very tight game between these two clubs. And there's a few things I'm keeping my eye out for this one. One is the quarterback question surrounding both teams. I think there's already people that are saying Dane Evans is struggling. And, uh, you know, I just I think that's kind of bullcrap because they really struggled offensively on the offensive line last week. Didn't really give him too much of a shot. They always struggle in Saskatchewan. So I'm not overly concerned about Dane Evans, but some people are. And then on the Calgary side, you have nothing but questions with Bo Levi Mitchell and his health and overall play. You have the, you know, young kid waiting in the wings in Jake Mayer, who has shown the ability to play at the CFL level in his limited opportunities. So you got to keep your eye out for those guys. And then another thing I'm looking at in this game and why I actually really like Hamilton in this matchup is that Calgary is one of those teams, kind of like Montreal. They need the running game as an important pacer for this team. Like some teams in the CFL don't necessarily need a great running game. Teams like Hamilton really uh, don't run the ball all too often, and they've had success the last couple of years doing that. Uh, teams like Saskatchewan uh, this year or last year, they didn't really run the ball too much. But a team like Calgary has become very dependent on a guy like Kadeem Carey in the backfield, and Carey is an outstanding running back. But the only thing is, is this Hamilton run defense is just so stout, and I think it's by far the best run defense in the CFL. And I just don't know if Calgary is going to be able to run the ball against this Hamilton front. That's what happened last season when these two teams played. And don't get me wrong, Calgary actually has a very good offensive line as well. But I just don't know if Calgary can run on this Hamilton front, which is going to force this team to have to throw the ball and rely on that. And I just don't know if Bo Levi Mitchell can stand back there and throw it 40 times and beat this Hamilton defense. So ultimately... I am going to pick the Tiger Cats with a big bounce back game here, winning the score of 24 to 16. And ultimately, that covers the spread in this case. The spread's very uh, small. So basically, all they have to do is win the game. But I just love that matchup from Hamilton's perspective. But over on Twitter, the fans are actually taking the Calgary Stampeders. 66% of respondents saying the Stampeders are going to win this game going to be very interesting. I believe this is the first time I've disagreed with a poll so far this season, so we'll see how it turns out. And then our final game of the week is the Saskatchewan Rough Riders visiting the Edmonton Elks on Saturday night. Saskatchewan opens as a six and a half point favorite here, which I was kind of surprised with because honestly, even though they're on the road here, seeing how Edmonton did last week and getting just completely thrashed, I thought the line was going to be double digits. Uh, but ultimately, at that number, I love the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. I'll just be honest right now. But things I'm looking for in this game include the effort level from the Edmonton Elks. I'm looking for very basic things like seeing if they can improve their tackling. That was a major issue for them last week. If they can improve little aspects of the game, I just think, you know, not that they'll win, but they'll be a lot more competitive and will look like an actual real professional football team out there. So, I'm keeping an eye on that from the Elks perspective if they can keep this game close by doing things like that, not turning the ball over, tackling, things like that, fundamentals of football. And then on the Saskatchewan side, I'm looking for to see if they can have a repeat performance from that front seven that really dominated Hamilton last week. I think coming into the year, I don't think I was very high on that defensive line outside of A.C. Leonard, who 
I think it's arguably the second or third best pass rusher in the CFL. But, you know, besides that, I think those other guys, a lot of young guys just kind of on the cusp, but not uh, really broken out yet. But I think they've just done a tremendous job at developing those players over the years and just bringing in new guys. You think of the guys they brought in last year. They obviously lose Jonathan Woodard to the NFL last year. He's a classic example of a guy that they really transitioned into the CFL very well. Uh, but there's other guys here like Pete Roberson and Charleston Hughes having a little bit of a resurgence last week. It's going to be very interesting to see how this team continues to play defensively. And if Cody Fajardo can have two very consistent games in a row, I think he has a chance to have a big 300, 400 yard day in this one, given the fact that Saskatchewan really doesn't like to run the ball, as I mentioned a few uh, minutes ago. I think they're going to be airing it out. That receiving core should be licking their chops playing this Edmonton secondary and linebacking core. So I'm really interested to see how that plays out. And ultimately, I think it's still going to take a few weeks for Edmonton to figure this thing out and become a competitive football team, which is why I'm taking the Saskatchewan Rough Riders to win this game 38-17. to That's a pretty high score. If you've seen my predictions, uh, predicting them to score 38 points, that's pretty high. So that really means that Edmonton's defense, I'm just not very high on them at this point. They're still trying to figure it out, and I think it's going to take them to midseason really to do so. And it's no surprise that on Twitter, the Edmonton Elks are not going to be picked to win this game by the fans. The fans actually taking the Rough Riders 86% of the time. So we'll see if we're both right or if Edmonton can shock the world in week two. But with that said, those are just my picks for week two of the 2022 CFL season. Be sure to let me know yours down in the comment section. Very excited for this week, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Once again, my name is Jason. If you want to support the channel, as always, be sure to hit like and subscribe. I really appreciate it, everybody, and all the support everyone has given me. And with that said, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.